In this video, I'm going to go over the assignment for this week and the things that we covered on Monday about beat, rhythm, sound trap, and recreating the Billie Jean drum track. So, if we start off by going to sound trap and opening up in our browser, I first want to kind of take you around and just give you a tour of this workspace and the things that are here. First of all, if we start over here on the left side, this is what we call a track header. The track header is a place where we can mute the track, solo the track, or adjust the volume. The horizontal row after the track, after the track header, is what we call the track. The track is where we'll place our sounds when we're creating music in Soundtrap. Above the track, you'll see this light gray bar, and this is what's called our cycle bar. If I click on it, it will repeat whatever is underneath it over and over until I hit stop. I can also change the length of the cycle by clicking on the end and adjusting it to the left or the right. At the top, we have some drop-down menus. We have our save button. And across the top, notice this thing that looks like a ruler. This is what we call our timeline. Like we discussed yesterday, we measure our music using beats and measures. So if I look at my timeline, the numbers up on the timeline represent measures. If I go to the bottom right hand corner of the screen, I have my zoom controls. So I can zoom in, or I can zoom out. Notice on the timeline, in between the measure numbers, there are these little notches. Each of those not notches represents a single beat. At the bottom of the screen, on the bottom left, we have our master volume that you can use to change the volume. We have record, rewind, fast forward, and play. These are what are called our transport controls. Tempo is here, and the tempo is the speed of our beat. So we can change the tempo by clicking on this and typing in a smaller number. If we want to make the tempo go slower, or we can type in a bigger number if we want the tempo to go faster. Next to this is what we call our metronome, or our click track. And we'll be talking about that more in a few minutes. I also want to draw your attention to our Google Classroom. If you look under resources, you'll find a Soundtrap master diagram that looks like this, that has all the different parts of the Soundtrap window labeled. Now, as part of your assignment this week, the first thing you're going to do is recreate the Billie Jean drum track in Soundtrap. So we're going to start by opening the Patterns Beat Maker. And when you open the Patterns Beat Maker, you'll see this window pop up at the bottom of the screen. As we discussed yesterday, note how these blocks are grouped into groups of four. Each block represents one beat. For example, you can see in this diagram where beat one is, beat two, beat three, and beat four. We're going to begin by creating our kick drum. So we said yesterday that our kick drum happened on beat one and beat three. So this group would represent beat one. So I'm gonna start by clicking on beat one and then beat three. This would be beat two. So I'm gonna come over here to this block, which would be beat three. Our snare drum was on counts two and four. So the snare drum, I'm gonna move over to count two, this group of blocks and then I'm going to go to count four for that group of blocks. Finally, we'll add our hi-hat. 
and there's two hi-hats on each beat. So I'll go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. So when you have this completed, it should look like this. Kick drum on beat one, kick drum on beat three, snare drum on beat two, snare drum on beat four, and then our hi-hat twice on each beat. When we have that completed, it'll sound like this. I can stop it by pressing the spacebar on my keyboard or I can use the transport controls at the bottom of the screen. I'll also show you here how we can change the tempo. By double, if I click above tempo and change the number to 100, it's going to go at a slower speed. If I change it to a higher number, say 140, it's going to go at a faster speed. The next part of this assignment is that we want this beat to go for four measures. And there's two ways, if you notice as we created our beat down here, Soundtrap created what we call a region in this track. In the upper right hand corner of the region we have the loop. So if you put your, your cursor in the upper, upper right hand corner, click and then drag, it will copy the region. And what you want to do is create a four measure region. So now we have one, two, three, four. If I want to extend my cycle up at the top, I have to first turn my patterns beat maker off and now I can change my cycle. Notice how when it gets to the end of the fourth measure it automatically cycles back to the beginning to repeat. Now, the next part of this assignment is that you're going to create two variations of the Billy Jean drum track using different drum sounds. So one way I can do this is if I come to my track header, and if you look for these three little buttons in the upper right hand corner of the track header, if I click on that button, it gives me the option to duplicate the track. So I'm going to now duplicate the track. And then I'm going to double click on this new track. And when I double click, I get my uh, pattern maker window at the bottom again. Just to show you, I'll double click. If I close this out, I can double click here, click, click, and it shows up. Now, I want to focus on just this track. So, I want to turn, I want to mute this track. So, I can do this in one of two ways. I can either click the mute button, and you'll see that it goes gray here. So, now it's going to mute that track. Or, I can use what's called the solo button. And the solo button is these headphones. If I click on that, it'll mute all other tracks except this one. So in the next part of this assignment, what I want to do is I want to change the sound of the drums that I'm using. And you can change the sounds by coming down to the window and notice here where it says Machines Dubstepper. If I click on that, I'll get a window that pops up. And over here, I've got a list of all kind of different drum sounds that I can use. So to check them out, I'm going to come over here and click my play button in the transport controls. I'm going to change my tempo back to the original. 
and now I'm going to listen to the different sounds I could use. So, as I select different sounds, there's the delay as it changes the instrument. So what you should do is go through your options of the different sounds, explore the different sounds you can find, and then decide which one that you would like to use. After you decide what sound you're going to use on the new track, you're going to duplicate the track again. I'm going to turn the solo button off here. So now I have both of these tracks muted. I'm going to double click. And again, I'm going to go through the process of just exploring the different sounds I could use for my drum track. Again, you just have to be patient. Sometimes it takes a minute. So that will complete the first part of the assignment. So now that you've created two variations of the Billie Jean drum track, what you're going to do now is create two additional drum tracks. So I'm going to start by once again duplicating the track. Turn the solo button off and then double click. On the second part of the assignment, what you should do is experiment with making different drum patterns with your drum track. So you can do this by adding blocks. can take them away. And when you get a pattern that you like, you can save that pattern. And now you're going to create another pattern. So I can come back up here, duplicate the track again. Now I'm going to solo this track and experiment with creating another drum pattern. Once you uh, experiment with the different drum patterns, you can also come back up here and if you want to rename your tracks, you can rename your tracks. So for example, I could call this my original track. I could call this sound variation one. Sound variation two. Call this rhythm variation one. And rhythm variation two. So once you've done that, you can rename your project. And then you'll want to save. Once you save, Soundtrap will automatically share your assignment with me. So I'll be able to go back and listen to what you've done and grade your assignment. I hope that you have fun, be creative, and I look forward to hearing some cool 